Fernando is a web developer and he is ready for a job. The problem is he's not getting callbacks or interviews. Is his portfolio to blame? We're gonna take a look at Fernando's portfolio today and the video starts right now. Real Tough Candy from RealToughCandy.com back online with you guys today for a portfolio review with Fernando. Before we kick this review off, give Fernando some love in the comment section, please, because this takes a lot of courage to put your work out there, especially when you know something that you've created needs improvement. I'm going to give you guys a preview or a, a just a view, I guess, no pre. <laughs> just a view of what this portfolio looks like. We're gonna go into an overall feedback session slash critique slash review, and then we're gonna address two questions he specifically had for me. His first question was, is this portfolio too bloated? His second question was, are my projects too basic? So we're gonna touch upon those questions as well, and those are great questions for this, for, for this portfolio. And hopefully you guys watching can get some inspiration from this as well. So without further ado, I'm going to I'm going to shut up for a minute and I'm going to show you guys what this thing looks like. All right, it's one page. All of these links lead, lead to sections here. And then the get in touch button pops out an email client. So going through this website, the first thing I did notice uh, was my, that my computer was very cranky when I fired this site up. I suspect due to all the animations, all the resources here, plus the GIFs, that this is a very resource intensive application. So that was a first impression. So this issue kind of leads in to the actual issue that employers might have with this site or probably will have with this site is that there is just a lot going on. Let's cut it out and break it down. There's the animation right here. This is the centerpiece. This is the first thing recruiters, employers, and other people see. This is the first thing I saw. This little splash page or whatever you want to call it. I love coding. I love React. Front end developer. And that's awesome. That shows people what you do in a fun, animated way. This is something that I think you should keep. However, looking at this stuff here led me to be a little confused because I saw the Apple, I saw the Android dude, and then I saw the Windows. And for a brief second, I thought maybe you did React, but you also were an iOS developer and you were also an Android developer and you were also a Windows app developer. So these icons here, I think I probably see we're trying to go with this, just trying to spruce things up. I think these need to go. And this is going to be a theme I talk about throughout throughout this session that uh, these icons and the animations and stuff are just a little frivolous. And in some cases, a lot frivolous. This is uh, kind of misleading, although I do see where you're trying to go with that. Uh, view code, contact me. I think uh, this might be a little redundant as well because get in touch is right here. Whenever you're doing these portfolios, you want to avoid redundancy. And that's the case with any type of coding that you're doing. This view code button is helpful for people who just want to see your coding skills and what you've been up to with your code. However, as a user, I didn't know where it was taking me. I thought maybe you would go down here to your projects, but it goes straight to your GitHub, as you can see right here. So I would consider revamping this button to say view GitHub rather than view code. A UI rule is that you always want to have your viewers know exactly where they're going to be taken once they click something. And then we have all sorts of social buttons here. Instagram. Um, I don't know which one this one is. I, I'm kind of scared to click on it. Okay, nothing happened when I click on that. So some of these aren't taking me in anywhere. And then there's a gear button. I would take all of these out and maybe keep your Twitter um, and put it in the footer or something. I would not include your Facebook, your Instagram, and all these other things. Indeed, yes, um, but is this the Reddit guy? I would not put that in there either. These are just excess, and you want to keep it simple. It's that kiss, kiss principle. Keep it simple, sweetheart. If you're cynical, you call it keep it simple, stupid, but I prefer the first one, the KISS principle. Keep it simple, sweetie, so that people don't have to be distracted by all this stuff. Because here's the thing, with every little component, it's one more distraction. 
and you want your message to be very focused. The purpose of this portfolio is to sell your skills. Take all of this out. That way people can see right away. Okay, he loves React. He's probably dabbling in it as we speak. And he's a front end developer. They know right away. You can't miss this thing. Um, so I'd just say stick with that component. You have the darkened picture here, which is great. Last time I saw this portfolio a couple days ago when I first looked at it, it was a full brightness photo and I could hardly read any of this stuff. So good on that. Let's go down here and we see the theme again with, you know, wanting this thing to be spruced up, wanting it to grab the attention of people, thinking when you're building this, it looks a little boring. What if I added an animation? Well, a problem, the problem again emerges it's a distraction from what your real message needs to be. I'm a developer and I'm looking for a job. This is what I'm capable of. A lot of these icons here don't relate to what you're talking about. PHP, this is the Android guy. The PHP emblem or symbol, whatever you want to call it, is an elephant. MySQL, same thing. All of these icons need to be revamped. And all this animation stuff, I think, is really distracting from your message. So let's go into the content of these little boxes. So React, Redux, Router, MySQL, PHP, and Node. These are things that you're working with. So what does React say? React makes it painless to create interactive UIs, design simple views for each state in your application, and React will efficiently update and render just the right components when your data changes. Great. Excellent description of React. However, people reading this already know what React is. And so that idea of redundancy comes into play again, and you want to snip that out as much as possible. Instead of this message, instead of defining React and telling people what they already know, tell people what they don't know. Tell people what you've been doing with React, how you've been implementing this in your projects, and how you solved a problem. What about Redux? What have you been doing with Redux to implement in your React projects? What have you been doing with router? What have you been doing with MySQL? How did you build things in MySQL? Same with PHP, same with Node. Let's go down here to this next section. I think this whole section needs to go. It's not adding to your message. It's not adding to the purpose of this portfolio. Uh, it's just zooming in on a few stock photos, on eight stock photos, and it's really adding to the inefficiency of this site. Take this entire section out. And now we get to the protein of your portfolio, the portfolio projects. These are the web projects I've recently developed. I love working with JavaScript technologies. Honestly, I'd probably just take this out because when a recruiter or an employment person, I'll just say employment person, when an employment person sees portfolio, they know what they're getting into. Um, and this is just, at this point, again, another distraction. Uh, we already know these are web projects you've developed. And seeing as you're a front-end developer, there's a good chance that you enjoy working with these things. Uh, so I don't think it needs to be stated a second time. I do like the GIFs. This is adding to some busyness. But if you do take these things out, relax on these animations and these color, these color things and all these other tricks, take out a lot of those tricks, these GIFs are going to pop. And I really like what you've done with these because it gives me an instant preview of what you've been working on. And I can see right away without reading anything. Oh, this looks like a hotel booking application. Oh, this is some sort of, some sort of clothing app. I don't know what this is, uh, but I can kind of see it has something to do with Pokemon. The GIF idea is really great. I think you should absolutely keep this and it's going to pop a lot more when you dissolve a lot of the stuff you've been doing out here. It's so easy to start overdoing things and what you find yourself doing is emphasizing everything. And when you do that, the unimportant stuff becomes just as noisy, just as bold, just as prominent as the real important stuff. So it's all, it all becomes noise. And so clipping all that stuff out we just talked about and, and highlighting this stuff, I think is going to do wonders for how people perceive your work and perceive your capabilities. I'll come back to your specific question. Are these projects too weak in just a little bit? Uh, because normally I don't do code reviews. I don't review the projects. I give ideas on how to better present these projects. Um, but we're going to talk about it. We'll talk about these projects in just a second here. And then it goes down to about me. So a few sentences with your biography, that's good. A lot of people don't include bios or they go on and on. Or they have like three words like dog lover, cat enthusiast, coffee drinker, which says nothing about the candidate. Um, so these things should be shortened to the point while illustrating a little more about you to humanize yourself. As an employer, I would not want to see that you're getting better at front-end development. 
I just would rather not think of it at all. Show me what you are good at. Show me what you can do. Show me your capabilities. My goal is to get a developer job in LA. This is good, geographically specific. One thing about this photo, I think I'm just gonna say it, you need to de-boobify this photo. I've worked in male-dominated careers all my life. Guys, don't lie, I know where your eyes are right now, okay? I'm not, you're not slick. Just de-boobify this photo somehow to keep it focused on your message down here. Now let's address your questions. Number one, is this portfolio too bloated? I think you probably could come to the conclusion that I think, yes, it is. It is too bloated. It is way too busy. And I've done this before too in projects where I want everything to be important. I want no feature missed by the visitor. So everything gets bolded, everything gets highlighted, everything gets animated. And as we've discussed, the problem is the real protein gets overlooked. So like I said, just to recap, toss these photos. They don't add anything to your message or your purpose. Uh, retool this to make it simple. Kiss, keep it simple, sweetie. And then this stuff too. I think with those tweaks, you're going to have a completely different portfolio, a different feel, a completely different feel. It's going to run a lot more efficiently and my computer is not going to be cranky. Uh, my specs are pretty decent on this machine. So if someone has you know, a worse machine than this one, they're really going to be feeling it. Um, and I think taking this stuff out and retooling this is really going to help with that. Are my projects too weak? Twitter clone, hotel booking app, CW, CRWN or crown clothing. Uh, just looking at these, I'm going to say yes. I also saw a Pokemon project somewhere here. Okay, that's something you need to fix too. Uh, this is way too hard for the viewer to see. I was expecting like arrow keys or something, uh, but I had to kind of squint to see how to get to your other projects. And honestly, if I hadn't done that first pass, I would only think you have three projects. Uh, so make these much more prominent. Put arrows right here. I'm recognizing most of these from Udemy projects, which I said in my last video is fine with some tweaks, um, but they are looking a little standard. Employers absolutely do not want to see cookie cutter projects for a few reasons. Uh, check out that video. It's popping up on your screen right now if you want to know why that is. Even if employers get past all this and say, okay, let's check out the projects and they see this burger builder, they see this Twitter clone, they're going to say, ooh, you know, I've seen these in other contexts. I've seen these in other portfolios. I'm just not seeing the thing that is going to make me say, yes, give this guy a call. Um, and I think that's the number one thing you can do right now, even though I've, I've spent quite some time ripping apart this portfolio. These projects need your attention, even if they're burger builders that have been rebranded as Tofurky builders. I can't even say that. Tofurky. Tofu turkey. That's a cut above the cookie cutter project status. So that would be my absolute number one is if you're submitting this to employers right now, actually, I know you are because we had talked about it. Take a lot of time to focus on what you can do to make these your own. Give it your little signature. Give it your little twist. Even though I know what Pokemon is and I've heard of Pokemon, I don't really know what this does. And as an employer, I don't have time to figure it out myself. So one thing I... <clears throat> I'm getting, I'm getting hoarse. I'm getting hoarse talking about this portfolio. Uh, one thing that can help a lot is the PAR method. And this is a, a just a killer method. I talk about it in how to get a job in web development. It's a course and a book. It's gotten five star reviews across the board. So check one or both of those resources out uh, on Amazon or Udemy. Link in the description box, link in the comment section. But this portfolio does need some work. And I think if you haven't checked out my course, shameless plug, but I think it is a good match for what you uh, need to do with this stuff. All in all, I think this portfolio has a lot of potential. And I think decluttering this, de-emphasizing this along with the portfolio work, you're going to get a lot more relevant callbacks. You're going to get a lot more relevant chances to interview with companies. Number one above anything, as soon as you put a twist on these projects, put it in your portfolio front and center. Highlight your best project and put it right here. Put a fat highlighted project right in the middle. Um, and just again, focusing on that emphasis and that weight. Fernando, thank you so much for sharing this portfolio. I know I ripped this portfolio apart, but it is because I have seen these mistakes made time and time again with others. And I want you to get callbacks and I want you to succeed. And the success of new and aspiring developers is my number one goal on this channel and everything else I do as Real Tough Candy. Guys, subscribe to this freaking channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.